Food Heals Podcast, episode number 11. At my old house, I had an aloe vera plant. Um, at this one, I do not because I believe I killed it. But that is Aww. a great point. You're the aloe vera killer. <laughs> I'm the every plant killer. <laughs> Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to change their status update from hashtag blessed to hashtag OMG even more blessed than yesterday, hashtag loving life. If you experience any of these symptoms, make sure to tweet a Kardashian immediately. Welcome, Food Heals Nation. I'm Allison Melody. I'm Susie Hardy. And today, Allison and I are going to share our favorite DIY recipes that you can make at home yourself. And later in the show, we'll check in with Whitney Lauritsen, the eco-vegan gal, about how to choose healthy home products that are non-toxic, as well as her favorite resources for organic, eco-friendly living. Our podcast today is sponsored by the Global Healing Center, which offers a wide variety of high-quality, green lifestyle products to help you maintain a clean body and live a healthy lifestyle. Later in the show, we'll tell you about the discount code we scored for you, Food Heals Nation, so you can get 20% off plus free shipping off any Global Healing Center brand product. And if you're a frequent listener, you probably already know what that discount code is and (laughs) that we have some of our favorite Global Healing Center products in our celebrity swag bags like Wrinkle Reducing Parfait Visage and their Aqua Spirit Refreshing Body Spray. So refreshing. I love that stuff. I know. It's an instant trip to the beach. Exactly. I should bring it to the beach. And my husband loves it too. He keeps it in his car, so we always spray it when we're in the car. (laughs) To be entered into our amazing swag bag giveaway contest and win a gift bag full of our favorite luscious, organic, vegan health and beauty products valued at over $300, just leave us a nice review on iTunes or Stitcher and tweet us a screenshot of your review at Food Heals Nation. If you don't have Twitter, you can post your screenshot to our Facebook wall or send it in an email to info at foodhealsnation.com. So we've gotten a lot of entries, so keep it coming, Food Heals Nation. We're so excited. Yes, thank you. And next up, our favorite DIY recipes. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. All right, so we have four DIY recipes for you today. I have two and Susie has two. I'm going to share my organic and non-toxic beauty routine and how to have a fresh face and get rid of fine lines before an event or a date or whatever. So this is what I really do. So I do it like once a week, maybe before an event or just once a week as maintenance. And it's a really good way to kind of do a facial at home. I definitely do this if I'm going to be on camera. (laughs) So (laughs) this really, this is really like, it's like a facial. It's like a hundred dollar facial in the comfort of your home. Love it. Yeah. So the first thing I do, there's three big steps. So the first step is I do a clay mask. So a clay mask is really, really hydrating and really detoxifying. So what it does is it's going to pull out all the toxins. So I've been using this brand called Evan Healy French Rose Clay for years, and I got it at Whole Foods. Like it's, it's like, $30, but it lasts a long, long time. And now I'm into No Tox Life's clay mask because, you know, they're a sponsor. She's not paying me to say this, though. Their stuff is amazing as well, and it's a little bit more affordable. So get a clay mask, and what it is is it's this clay that you're going to mix with water and make sure not to use a metal spoon because it's going to take the properties of the metal and put it in your mask. So you want to use any other kind of container such as ceramic or anything wooden just to make your mixture. So all you do is you mix the clay with purified water and it's going to make this paste and you're going to put it on your face. I put it all around my neck and like get all in there. You get dirty. Yeah. And then your face turns brown. (laughs) (laughs) So don't do it in front of your husband or your boyfriend because you might look kind of silly unless they don't care. Just kidding. They don't care. So they love you for who you are. (laughs) And they should. They should. If they don't, if you can't do it in front of them, you probably shouldn't be dating with them. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways. So it really, what happens? happens is it starts out liquid and then it freezes and it dries and then your face is frozen. So I always try to do it with a smile (laughs) so that I'm frozen in a smile and not a scowl. Do you really? Yeah. That's really thinking ahead. (laughs) I know. It doesn't always happen, but you know, I try. Um, So it freezes everything. 
and then it takes all the toxins out. Okay, so then your face is frozen, and you're gonna wash it off. Okay, so that's step one. Step one. Yeah, so it's tightened. It, it, you're so tightened after that, I can't even tell you. It really does. Have you clay done ma- it before? I have been doing clay masks. I remember when I was 12 or 13, starting to get into being you know, beautiful and doing routines, and yeah. my mom had St. Ives clay masks. Oh, okay. You know, St. Ives has been around forever. Yeah. And they're pretty natural, I think. Um, I don't know. Yeah. No, well, they're apricot scrub, I swear by, but they're but I use their clay masks, and that when you put on any clay mask, exactly, like you cannot move your face. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a natural Botox, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if only we could walk around like that. But. Yeah, exactly. So wash that off, and then the second step is I apply these things called facial smoothies. So these are really interesting. There are these little adhesive strips that you can put on your face. And I think they call themselves the natural alternative to Botox online. But um, what they are, it's like if you were putting tape on your face, right? But it's not an adhesive that's toxic. It's like a natural adhesive. And what it does is it takes out all those little fine lines and just flattens out your face. So it really gives you this like fresh look. They're amazing. You can leave them on for 20 minutes before you go out. Some people wear them overnight. Like they do so much in such a short amount of time. It's incredible. Remind me to tell you a funny story about tape. (laughs) Do you want me to say it now? I think so. Okay. (laughs) I feel like you have to. (laughs) I've seen, I've seen facial smoothies. I've never tried them. I've always, I saw them at the beauty supply. So it's good to know that they work. I love them. Um, I'm from New York. And my good girlfriend from high school back in New York works in, uh, owns salons, actually owns hair salons, and was telling me about a lady that she met that tapes her face at night with scotch tape. With scotch tape? With scotch tape. Oh, that that, can't be good for you. (laughs) No, probably not. But she said she looks amazing. So like what she would do is like around her eyes and I guess her forehead is just like kind of pull the skin, Uh put tape over it. And what the tape does is, you know, if you, I'm a side sleeper or a stomach sleeper, which is the worst. I can't sleep on my back. And they always say that 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 affects your skin. Like it smushes Mm. it and it wrinkles it, right? So she would put tape around her eyes and her forehead, flatten it, put the tape on, and that acts, it d- won't let your skin wrinkle at night. That's amazing. Okay, so <laughs> that's what the skin smoothies essentially are. They're just not scotch tape. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd imagine the skin smoothies have something in them too to maybe plump and firm and make you look, you know, good because— They you know, advertise that they do. I can't tell you what that is. Right, but they, right. I mean, this is a very, this is a mechanical way. I, I don't know what in scotch tape, what that would do to your face, but a, mecha- <laughs> a mechanical way of flattening your wrinkles. I, I had to, I had to mention that because it's just funny. That is so funny because it's like she was doing it. And that's probably why the facial smoothies like made a brand and got popular because probably there's a lot of people that were doing this. I've never heard of it, but it sounds like she was doing it and other people are probably doing it. This is a too. really cheap, like dollar store solution. Yeah. <laughs> I think the facial smoothies are better. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, the facial smoothies aren't even that expensive. So don't use tape, Food Heals Nation, because there's some chemicals in there. So yeah. use the smoothies, the facial smoothies. That's a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty funny. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to have to start wearing them at night because I'm just doing it before a party or before an event, but I know that you can, it says you can sleep in them, so it's just like your friend was doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, what's next? Next is then I moisturize with pure organic aloe vera. Now, aloe vera has been called like the most anti-aging plant on earth and we don't want the blue or green brightly colored drugstore kind okay that is not aloe vera that is chemical laden shit okay here's what you want you want an aloe vera where the ingredients list says aloe vera you do not want any other chemicals anything else in there now do you ever use uh do you ever have an aloe vera plant and just cut it And then put that on your face? At my old house, I had an aloe vera plant. Um, At this one, I do not because I believe I killed it. But that is a great point. You're the aloe vera killer. (laughs) I'm the every plant killer. (laughs) I have to learn some tips. I'm learning from Kimberly Vanderbeek right now, who was on episode, I believe, five, um, about the air cleaning plants and everything like that she told us about. And so I am learning how how to take care of plants. And Dan, my husband, is excellent about taking care of plants. So he's really inspired me. I need to buy you an aloe vera plant. I know. That's a good idea. So the point is, is that you put the aloe vera on and you make sure that it's not from the drugstore and it's either from a plant or if it's from the store, it has one ingredient and 
Aloe vera is 99% water. So first of all, it's like super hydrating. And then the second part is the 1% it's made up of is just essential vitamins and minerals that our skins need. And it helps the skin produce collagen and it acts as a toner. So you've just done these two things to your face. You did the clay mask and then you did the facial smoothies. So your face is already really tight. Then you put the aloe vera on. I'm telling you, your skin is like it was when you were 15 years old. Like it is. I'm going to try this. Yes. It's a great, absolutely wonderful routine. And I still want to recommend that I still use other products, but this is like the once a month, once a week regimen for maintenance. So you don't have to go get an expensive hundred dollar facial. No, there are so many ways you can make, as I said, when I was younger, I started getting into masks and my mom was always into nutrition and health and she knew how to make at-home masks. That's awesome. And one was uh, egg yolk and brewer's yeast, also very tightening, mm. like, and also infusing a lot of B vitamins and the nutrients from the egg yolk into your face. Another one is just plain yogurt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very softening. And my favorite, which I found fairly recently, honey. Yes. Have you tried really the honey? Good. Yeah, I've done a honey mask before and it's really tightening as it's well. It's very sticky. Yeah. But it's very delicious. Yeah. If it, it drips, in, if it <laughs> drips <laughs> in your mouth, you okay. just lick it off. But it's softening. Yeah. No, that's a great one. All right. Moving on. Tell us about your toothpaste recipes. I know that you're very passionate about toothpaste and everything that you know we use to clean our teeth. So tell us some of your recipes, what you buy for toothpaste. Will do. Okay. So Food Heals Nation... If you don't know this about me already, you're going to learn that I'm very, very passionate about teeth care. (laughs) Yes. And if you want to hear more about this, go back to episode three where Susie and I interview each other because it's okay. Because at the end of that um, interview, we get really deep into our passion for cleaning your teeth. So go back and listen to that one. (laughs) So um, to follow up on that... um, you know, I turned, I don't use toothpaste. I may use it. My husband still has it, mm-hmm. even though I berate him and tell him he should just be using baking soda tooth powder. He still likes the freshness and the mintiness sure. of a toothpaste. And every once in a while, I'll be like, oh yeah, I like the taste. I haven't, but I've completely turned to a tooth powder. And anybody that I've introduced this concept to um, that has made the switch always tells me, oh my God, my teeth feel cl- like my teeth feel cleaner. And there's a reason for that. There's a scientific reason. And I won't go on about that because we know I could talk about this forever. <laughs> but so um, to be honest, um, you know, there's many recipes online for different types of, you, you want, in my opinion, you want a baking soda based tooth powder. And the reason for that is scientific. You want, you're, you're turning, baking soda will turn your mouth alkaline. Yes. In an alkaline environment, bacteria cannot grow. Therefore, you cannot get cavities. So if twice a day you are brushing with a baking soda-based tooth powder or paste, you can make your own paste, um, you are you are using science to prevent bacteria from making cavities and then making more problems for yourself. I've been using this for probably nine years and I don't have any problems. Um, my I have tr- I've experimented with different recipes and here is one for Food Heals Nation. Um, obviously baking soda is the main ingredient. Um, and then it's very baking soda by itself, which you can use. I have tried is very salty. So if you're switching from a toothpaste to a baking soda, tooth powder, you're going to find that it's a different experience, but then you're also going to find that your teeth feel cleaner. So the base of it is baking soda. Um, here's a recipe that you can try two tablespoons, baking soda, two tablespoons bentonite clay. And we've mentioned bentonite clay in other episodes. Bentonite clay is good. You can use it to clean internally Mm -hmm. as well as externally. You can turn it into a mask. You can clean. I read a a recipe recently that you can clean your hair with it. It's full of minerals, um, but it also helps. It pulls out toxins, doesn't it? It pulls out toxins and it remineralizes the teeth and it's a natural um, cleaner, but isn't so abrasive. So, Mm -hmm. but the baking soda and the bentonite together are non-abrasive. Um, you And then so two tablespoons baking soda, two tablespoons bentonite clay, a half a tablespoon sea salt. Sea salt is also great for pulling out toxins. It's great for toning your gums. Um, Interesting. We'll move on eventually. When I get past the teeth part, we'll move to the gums because <laughs> you, I'm all about the entire mouth. Um, it actually tones your gums. And this is important for, for periodontal disease, for receding gums, which— you know, 
most old people have, a and lot it of doesn't have, it. have to happen. And that that, that it, it's it's a whole process. Where well, it's it's, a, it's fake. It's fake information that certain things happen with old age. Certain things yes. happen without the, the prevention methods, such well, or as, the proper nutrients to keep them in place. Yeah. Um, so the sea salt will tone your gums and, and you, and also, and I have a whole, yeah, we're going to get the, to this in my, when we do our teeth episode, which I'm so excited about <laughs> because, um, I also had receding gums and I'd always been very, very dig- diligent about trying to take care of all of my teeth. And, um, not only do you want to make sure that you have no cavities in your teeth, you want to make sure your gums are healthy and holding on to your teeth. That's what they, that's what they are there, there for. Yeah. And then, um. Now, this is going to be a completely different experience from a commercial toothpaste or even a Tom's toothpaste. You can add any kind of essential oil. I I advocate a natural essential oil. You want to make sure that it's not full of fillers. Um, If you go to a reputable natural food store and if they have pure essential oil, that's what you want to use. You can use whatever you like. You can use peppermint. You can use cinnamon. You can use licorice, which is not my favorite. Um, But those are the two top ones I would recommend, peppermint or cinnamon. And you add that just to kind of make it a little bit more fun to use. And then the experience of it, you mix all that together, you wet your toothbrush, you dip it in, and then you just brush as you normally would. And, um, you know, in my experience, everybody that have turned onto this is like, oh my God, this is, my teeth feel cleaner. And not only are they cleaner, they're, they're healthier. When you use a regular toothpaste, all you're doing is making suds. You're not using science to prevent cavities and you're not remineralizing your teeth. Which is so important for teeth health Mm -hmm. because teeth are like bones. They have the ability to regenerate. Absolutely. allow them. So what are you doing every day? Are you doing something that allows your teeth to stay healthy and to heal themselves? Or are you doing things that are allowing them to decay and you have to go back to the dentist all the time and get work done? Mm -hmm. Who wants that? I don't want that. Both of my parents had that. Both of my parents had that too. Yeah. And And I don't have that. And And that's part of my passion. That's part of my reason for this um, where I saw my parents suffer that way and, just, you know, didn't have the education. And, and, even, and even doing what the modern dental industry tells you to do, you still lose teeth. You still have cavities. You still have to face root canals. I've never had a root canal, knock on, knock on the table. But <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want one because that leads to other things, other greater problems down the road, not to mention that it's pain and it costs a lot of money. Yeah. Now, on top of all of this, if you don't feel like making your own recipe, if you don't feel like going through all the trouble, there is a fantastic tooth powder I get at Whole Foods. You can also find it online. It's called Echo Dent. They have peppermint flavor. They have cinnamon. They have anise, which is like the licorice. Uh, they also have an all whitening or a whitening powder that I believe has some peroxide kind of powder mm-hmm. in it. And it's like eight bucks and that lasts me six months. Amazing. So the truth is, Food Heals Nation, that uh, Susie told me about the EcoDent tooth powder, and I got the anise, um, and I do not like licorice. So then I tried— Why did you get that one? That's not, not my favorite either. I do not, I'm do not. i not a, luck, a licorice girl. It was the only one they had at the small oh. Beverly Hills store. Oh, they also have a lemon lime. Oh, I haven't seen that one. They also have a lemon lime. My favorite is still the peppermint. Yes. So now I've tried the peppermint. The peppermint is my favorite. And before I discovered the tooth powder that Susie is talking about, um, what I did was a combination of baking soda, coconut oil, and Tom's toothpaste. So sometimes I would start out my morning with doing coconut oil because that's really antibacterial as well. You can do oil pulling, which is where you... um, put the oil in your mouth and you swish it for as long as you can and it binds to the toxins, takes them out, and then you want to spit that out. Never swallow. So don't let kids do this unless they understand they can't swallow it because it's going to put the toxins that they just took out right back in their body. So it's very important to understand that before you let any kids swish with this. Um, But moving on, so I would do the coconut oil brush with the baking soda. And then when I'm in a hurry and I didn't feel like dealing with dealing with anything. I would just use the Tom's toothpaste, which I still have on hand. Um, But now I'm totally into the tooth powder. Um, Peppermint and cinnamon are the two best flavors I found. And then like Susie said, you can make it at home for pennies on the dollar. Oh my God. So, I mean, not that like, okay, so let's be honest. Toothpaste is not a huge expense in our economy, but like- Well, it is if you're buying the natural Tom's or the other natural types. That's true. But like, you can literally make this for pennies and it'll last, you can make a whole bunch of it and it'll last you a year. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then if you really want to go the extra step, if you don't like a powder, I actually prefer the powder. It, it's a different experience. Takes may, might take some getting used to. 
If you really want to take the extra step, you take the recipe that I gave and you add some glycerin. Mm -hmm. Glycerin is natural. It's in a lot of stuff. It's in soap. Yep. It's, um, it's, and it's in a lot of food stuffs. And it will make it into a liquid if you prefer that more, like a, more of a paste. Mm -hmm. And you put it in a jar, an airtight jar and you can use it that way. But so I love the powder. Lots of options, food lots of options. Yeah. So get your teeth straightened out. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and then you will have less visits to the dentist. We guarantee it because we have both experienced it, you know. Yeah. All right. I'm going to tell you some natural air fresheners. So... When you want your house to smell good, I totally get it, especially if you have pets that maybe have had accidents or, you know, you have food that you forgot to clean up. I don't know. For whatever reason, your house doesn't smell amazing and you're going to have guests come over. I don't want you to use the plugins. I don't want you to use the chemical-laden unnatural spray. I'm going to give you a bunch of tips on ways to make your house smell amazing and you don't never have to buy those products again. And those are expensive too. And they're toxic. So you don't want to breathe those chemicals in your air. You don't want your guests breathing them. It's ridiculous. It's unnecessary. There's so many ways. So the first one is fresh flowers. It sounds easy. It sounds simple, but you know, on a long-term basis that can get expensive. That's just something to do if you have company coming that night, but I have a lot more. So don't worry. Another thing you can do is take the dried flowers after the flowers have died, and those will keep the scent for a while. So you can put dried herbs and flowers in a room. This is great for a guest room because it looks really pretty, and then it smells good too. And then if you want to get rid of odors around the house, especially, I say this about pets because I have two dogs and sometimes they have accidents, and a really good way to absorb that smell is to put baking soda or vinegar with lemon juice in a small dish around the house, and that will absorb the odor so that that odor, odor is gone pretty quickly. This, this works really fast. Baking soda is like this miraculous thing. It is. I Like I told you, I uh, forget what episode it is, but we had a woman write into Holistic Voice who sent me a baking soda remedy for shrinking tumors because she had cancer and she shrunk her tumor with baking soda, without chemotherapy, without radiation, et cetera. And she did other things too with her diet and nutrition, but she was doing a certain amount of baking soda every day and it was shrinking the tumor. So baking soda is hugely healing, whether it's for your teeth, whether it's ingested, whether it's around your house, it can also be used for cleaning. So Google baking soda and you'll find so many recipes for healing. And baking soda is the cheapest thing. <laughs> it's so, so cheap. cheap. Yeah. Another thing that you can do is grind up a slice of lemon into the garbage disposal. And that'll just leave like this nice little fresh lemon scent in your kitchen. If you are cooking or maybe you just finished cooking and you just want to leave it smelling fresh. <laughs> I like that. I never thought about that. That's really smart. It's so easy. Yeah. And yeah. it smells great. And it doesn't last very long, but it's, it's a temporary fix. Um, and then what else you can do is having house plants reduces odor in the home. Now, remember back to the episode with Kimberly Vanderbeek, where we talked about what kind of candles to use and what kind of plants to buy that will clean your air. That is really important. So go back and listen to that episode because she gives so many tips and you can Google that too if you want, but she really breaks it down. And then one of my favorites, and it depends on if you like coffee. Do you like coffee, Susie? I love coffee. <laughs> All right. So. Probably to my detriment, but I know I love coffee. Okay. Well, I love the smell of coffee. So here's a really easy one. You can keep fresh coffee grounds on the counter, whether it's in your kitchen or, you know, in your dining room, wherever you want it to smell like that. And oh, that smell, it, it smells so good. I love that smell personally. And I'm not like the hugest coffee drinker. I don't need coffee every day. I enjoy it once in a while, but that smell it is just, it's music to my ears. I don't know what the expression is, but it's so good. It's music to your ears. It's music to your nose. <laughs> it's music to my nose. There has to be another expression for what it is to my nose. No, it's true. It's like um, when I smell really good Italian coffee, mm. it's they're, they're, it's so aromatic. It's it, There's something like peppy and, it, oh yeah, it smells so good. Yeah, so you could definitely use that in your home. So those are just a few alternatives. I'm sure there's plenty more, but- Stop with the plugins. Stop with the sprays. You know, it's not necessary. Don't it's need toxic. the Febreze. Yeah. Nope. Get it out. 
All right. What else do we have, Susie? Well, I have a recipe for an all-purpose cleaner that guess what it has in it? I can't even guess. Could it be baking soda? It could be baking soda. (laughs) And vinegar, which we also talk a lot about. Mm -hmm. So a great all-purpose cleaner recipe is mix half a cup of vinegar and a quarter cup baking soda into half a gallon or two liters for our Canadian or European friends in uh, half a gallon, two liters of water. Um, and, you know, feel free to add a few drops of essential oils, such as lemon or orange, to give it a nice citrus scent. And again, when you're choosing essential oils, and actually we should do an episode on this because I know a lot about essential oils. Mm-hmm. Um, I've used them in my massage practice. Yeah. And you always want to make sure that you're getting pure oils. You want to make sure that there's no filler oils. There's um, there's the cheaper ones that have a base oil, like a walnut oil, you know, or a linseed oil, not linseed. There's, there's cheaper oils that have a, a filler oil, and then they'll add just a few drops of the oil for scent. But um, you want to make sure they're getting a pure oil. This might be a little bit more expensive, but it'll last you a lot longer. And if you're making this cleaner, you just need a couple of drops. Es- essential oils are what when you when you zest a lemon or when you peel an orange and you see that spray mm-hmm. it's in the peel and essential oils are actually the immune system of a of a plant i don't know if you knew that i did not know that but i love that yeah they're the the they're the um potent part of a plant's immune system that actually are antimicrobial, antibacterial, antifungal, and happen to smell really freaking good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to do a future es- episode and I'm going to put Susie in the hot seat and I'm going to interview her all about essential oils because this is not my area of ex- expertise at all. Yeah. I, um, there's a, there's a couple of, well, there's actually one brand in particular that I love, but we'll talk about in the, in, talk about that in the future. So much upcoming fun. We have. <laughs> so mix half a cup of vinegar, ha- a quarter cup baking soda into half a gallon or two liters of water. Add some essential oils. Could be whatever. It could be pine oil. It could be clary sage. It could be lemon, orange, whatever you like. could be ylang ylang. <laughs> I love that scent. And put it into a container. You probably want to use a, a glass container if you have it. Now, you can use this for a multitude of things. You can use it for removal of water deposit stains on shower stall panels, on bathroom chrome fixtures. You can use it on floors, on windows, on bathroom mirrors. It is endless. I love it. That's a great recipe. I've done some similar ones, but I don't think I understood how to add the essential oils. So maybe on a future show, when we talk about the essential oils, we can make one and then we can test it around the house. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm in. All right. Coming up next, we talk to Whitney Lauritsen, the eco-vegan gal, on how to choose organic products, how to shop for eco-friendly products, and her favorite home health and wellness resources. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to the Food Heals Podcast, where you'll find the tools to become a hotter, healthier, happier you. We'll be right back with Allison Melody and Susie Hardy. Food Heals Nation, if you are looking for the highest quality supplements, the most luscious organic skincare, and a brand name that you can trust to be free from toxic chemicals, look no further than the Global Healing Center. I have been using their products for years. Their Parfait Visage face lotion literally makes my skin look younger. And it comes in a beautiful bottle, so it is perfect as a gift as well. And the Oxy Powder Colon Cleanse Capsules are the most powerful detox supplements I have ever use they get everything out and they don't leave you feeling full or uncomfortable the mission of the global healing center is to bring back good health positive thinking happiness and love and they want to help you realize that your body is a self-healing mechanism well i couldn't agree more so i've teamed up with dr group and the global healing center to bring you a discount exclusive to food heals listeners Go to their website at globalhealingcenter.com, pick out the items you want, and use the discount code FOODHEALS, all one word, for 20% off your purchase, plus free shipping to the U.S. and Canada. 20% off is a great deal, Food Heals Nation. I love their products, and I know you will too. And we're back with Whitney Lauritsen, founder of Eco Vegan Gal, with over 550 videos on eco-friendly vegan living. Whitney is here to help you take charge of your health and happiness so you can lead the best life possible. So Whitney, tell us your top tips for detoxing your home and what kind of body care are you using? 
That's a great question. My biggest tip is to always read ingredient labels and really start to understand what ingredients are in your products. And even though I've been studying this for years, it's still confusing to me. So it, it's going to take a little while. You got to be kind of patient with it. I really recommend that you do your research before you buy something, before you go to the store, because I find I get really overwhelmed when I'm at a store. There's a lot of options. There's long ingredient lists. We're lucky now that with mobile phones and, and all this inter internet access that we have that you could actually do one of two things. You can go to the store and, and actually just look up the the product there and the certain ingredients if you don't recognize them. But now there are applications and websites where you can scan a barcode and they'll tell you more about the ingredients. And one of my favorite resources, I can't remember if they have an app or not. I'm, I'm like 90% sure that they do is the Environmental Working Group, which is usually abbreviated to EWG. Yes. They have a database called the Skin Deep Database and it is my top resource and it has been for years because you can enter in a good majority of products out there, usually the more mainstream labels into their system and they'll give it a rating and they'll tell you why the rating is what it is. It's usually from zero to I think 10, but you'll see a range from like zero to seven with most products. And usually if it's under a three, between zero and three, that means that that product is generally considered safe for you. And there are a number of different factors for that, and they actually break it down by ingredients. You can go in and look and see what concerns you have, and it helps you make wiser uh, purchasing choices when it comes to body care. Um, you know, the same thing is true with, with home goods as well. So like cleaning products, for example, are really important to check the ingredients on. I also find that if you go to a natural market, there's a very good chance that the products are going to be relatively good for you. And, you know, it's one huge thing that I've learned over the years is just because you buy something from a natural food store or a natural market doesn't mean that it, it is absolutely good for you. There are different levels. But if you shop at even Trader Joe's, most of their products are really clean, uh, home goods and body care. Um, of course, Whole Foods, co-ops, any of sort of natural market there generally is going to have knowledgeable staff and a good selection of products there. And, um, you know, starting there and just buying, like that's where I started. I actually started buying products at Trader Joe's right when I was in college and wrapping up college as well. I was always shopping at Trader Joe's because it was so inexpensive. And I was really excited that they had all these natural shampoos and conditioners and lotions and, you know, home goods and all that stuff. And so I was buying all that toothpaste, all that. Um, but then... I started realizing that just because it says natural on the label doesn't always mean that it's 100% good for you. So I started educating myself more through sources like EWG, and um, now I just become really selective. And it's, again, just like I talked about earlier with food, it's really empowering when you start to understand what certain ingredients are and, and what to avoid and, and what is beneficial, what's marketing, all of that. So that's something that I love learning more and more about, just like with food. I usually find that if you keep, if you purchase things that have short ingredient lists, if you purchase products that have certifications, like organic certified is a good one, and there's a whole ton of others, cruelty-free certified and all of that. Um, and then you'll usually say things like no parabens, no phthalates, you know, no SLS. Those are some of the top three ingredients. You'll see this like right on the front or the back of the, the product. If, and those things combine certifications, short ingredient lists, ingredients that you can recognize, and then a list of things that they don't com contain usually is a good sign. Um, I also think it's really helpful to make things yourself. This is good for your wallet. This is good for the environment. And this is good for your health. So you can make so many things like it's as simple as like baking soda and vinegar, of course, or a common staple. Olive oil is a good thing. And then coconut oil is phenomenal. You can use coconut oil in so many different ways. You can actually use baking soda for not only your home, but also for your body, whether it's toothpaste, whether it's, I don't know, I could go on and on. You can use salt and sugar, like so many things from your kitchen that you're going to put in your body can be used to clean your home and put on your body to clean your body. And that's one of my favorite topics as well as is, is reminding people that 
your skin is actually your largest organ. So whatever is in contact with your skin, whether it's like a cleaning spray or whether it's beauty or body care, cosmetics, any of that, it's so important for it to be clean. If, if, you, if you don't recognize something, you should definitely look it up and see what it is because just as you would look at the ingredient list for your food, you want to do the same thing when it comes to everything else that you're in contact with. And again, if it's in your kitchen, why not try to find out if you can turn it into a cleaning product or a body care product? And there are so many great resources out there. We, we have access to the internet, most of us. If you're listening to this, you do. <laughs> so you can go and just do a web search for how to make your own blank. And there's almost guaranteed going to be a, a recipe for it out there. Um, so I think that just empowering yourself with that, and if it's something simple that you can make one time and have a batch of that can last a while, then it's, it's so worth the time investment into that. Um, and, you know, just thinking as, as basic as possible, like, uh, I mean, if it comes from a plant, usually that's wonderful. I'm a huge fan of essential oils. I love essential oils for, uh, like a perfume alternative because a lot of fragrances can be harmful to us, but essential oils tend to be really high quality. They can uplift your mood. They're actually great mood enhancers. You can use essential oils, uh, to, you know, clean your hair, clean your home. You can use them for your gums, for your teeth. Like there's so many cool uses for essential oils. And that's something really worth investing in high quality essential oils. Um, I also wanted to give you a couple of my favorite resources, literally a couple. Um, Sophie Uliano is one of my all time favorite people. She has written several books about eco friendly beauty. Yes, and we're having also- her on the podcast as well. Oh, fantastic. She's oh my amazing. gosh. <laughs> I love that woman so much. Me too. I love her more and more as time goes on. She's Her books are unbelievable. She's such a great resource and an amazing personality. Gorgeously other- Green was one of the first books that got me started in this world. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so cool to hear. Oh my gosh. I'm glad. I'm so excited that she's going to be on your podcast. Yeah, she's awesome. <laughs> um the other people that you would be great on your podcast as well, if you don't know about them, are Ron and Lisa Barras. Mm. And they call themselves the Healthy Home Dream Team. And they are my top resource for all things green for your home and healthy for your home. It is so incredible, their knowledge. I did, I think, three videos now with them on YouTube. And um, they taught me so much. I mean, I could just sit down and listen to them talk all the time. They they went through my home. They came over and they actually do these. You, they do in-person or Skype consulting that you can get. And they'll go through every aspect of your home and test the air quality, the water quality. They'll test the electricity to make sure that it's not interfering with like mm-hmm. your health and all of that. I mean, they literally go through and tell you everything about your home and how to improve it. And they have all of these amazing case studies and resources about how these simple shifts can make a profound impact in everything from your sleep to your allergies to your long-term health. It's it's so remarkable. That is amazing. You know, we just moved into this house four months ago, and I know it has so many issues. There's paint peeling, and I'm wondering what is that letting out into the air. So what a great resource. I'll definitely link to them in the show notes and see if I can get in touch with them to do something around here. Definitely. They They are the most accessible people just to anybody, like you write them a message, they respond, like they live in Orange County. Um, so they'll definitely be on your podcast if you want to have them. Um, awesome. but they, they have a book called just green it. That's really useful. It's actually a super comprehensive book cause it shows you things to swap out. Like here's just a common thing that you would normally buy, but here's a better alternative for mm-hmm. it. Um, and then they, they do all these TV appearances. They have videos, like they're just, They're incredible, and they've got a great website with a blog and all of that. So, I mean, Sophie plus Ron and Lisa, for people that are just kind of diving into this and don't know where to start, if you get their books, you go on their website, you watch their videos, like they will teach you so much and keep it really simple. And I think that's the most important thing is just to make the whole – you know, aspect of this as, as simple as possible, because it's really easy to get overwhelmed. And, and my huge tip would be to reduce overwhelm by, by feeling excited and empowered and knowing that you're making a big difference. I will say one other quick resource that I, I 
recently got super into, um, who's kind of a great mixture between detoxing your home body care and all that, but also food is Dr. Susan Bennett. Are you, or is it, I can't remember if it's Susan or Suzanne. Are you familiar with her? Oh my gosh. She's another unbelievable person also based in Los Angeles. All three of all four of them are based in the LA Southern California area. Um, but so- Dr. Susan Bennett actually focuses a lot on allergies and she wrote a book that really sh- helped me a lot as I talked about allergies earlier called the seven day allergy makeover. And she goes through every different aspect of your life from your food to your home, to your water, to your emotional state, like all these different aspects of what's going on and how it impacts your health. And although the book's very much about allergies, it's kind of just a phenomenal book for health in general. And she has the most incredible story about how she got into this. Her son had such massive health issues and she actually changed her whole career path to help heal her son naturally. She changed everything to devote her life to it. And now it's it's her her whole career path. And she's helping people in person and online and through her books. And she has so much information. That book is just I, – I literally started crying reading that book because Aww. I felt so sad that people go through all of these issues – without knowing how simple it is to switch them by just making a few, like one thing she opened my eyes to was about how she discovered that part of what was causing allergic reaction with her son was the type of pots and pans that she was using. He has uh, some sort of reaction to like, I don't remember if it was nickel or stainless steel or something, Mm -hmm. some, some metals in general. And so she can't use any stainless steel with food prep for, or, you know, even stainless steel utensils. Wow. And she said that's actually quite common. And I remember reading that just thinking, why is nobody talking about this? Like we, th- we hear that stainless steel is the best thing to use. I know. And it's going to last forever. Yeah. But if you have a sensitivity to that and you don't realize it, imagine you're exposing yourself to something like this over and over again. And that's why Sophie, Ron and Lisa and uh, Susan are just – making such a big difference because they're they're cueing you into things that are so basic that you could change that would impact your entire life. Well, I'm really interested in looking up all of them. And I love what she did because she took something that could be so negative and so scary and turned it into something positive. And mm-hmm. people don't like it when I say this. They get really offended. But I say disease is opportunity. It's opportunity mm-hmm. to heal yourself, to change your life. And if she healed her son and now is using that platform to spread awareness to everyone else who might going be going through something similar, I think that's incredible. And I'm so happy to hear a story like that. Oh, yeah. And I think parents especially, like every parent should read that book as well, whether they or their... I mean, most kids these days are suffering from some sort of food allergy. In fact, I was reading... I saw some stat, and I'm not going to quote it because I don't remember exactly (laughs) what it was, but it was this shocking number. It was something like 24 million people in the United States or something suffer from some sort of like autoimmune disease or something. I mean, it's crazy. This We have an epidemic right now of food sensitivities and allergies and asthma and all of these conditions, you know, obesity and all of these things that are related to our lifestyle. And it's like we're getting them because our parent, you know, maybe they're passed down through our parents or maybe it's just because we're born into these home living situations. Like imagine you know, you don't know that stainless steel could be an allergy and you just use it because that's what you do. And you don't realize that that could compromise your, your child's health or your own health. And if people aren't talking about these things, it's not going to change. And so and I just feel like reading it and knowing it, whether it affects you personally or not, is so important. Absolutely. And it's the lifestyle choices we're making. But sometimes we don't know that we're making bad choices. Right. And then when we find out, it's up to us to change it. But then there's also the fact of like access and affordability. Some people don't have access to things. Some people can't afford things. So it's every little thing that you can do on your own to change your life. And I know you have a book about how to eat organic affordably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I wrote this ebook called Healthy Organic Vegan on a Budget because that was one of the hot topics with my work. It's one of my most 
I think it actually is my most popular video. It has almost 300,000 views on YouTube. And every time I would talk about, you know, doing things on a budget, people would perk up, they would be interested, they wanted to know more. So I spent about six months really researching this and just figuring out all of it. It was also inspired by a challenge that I did uh, that was the challenge itself was inspired by something that has been getting a lot of news coverage, which was about living um, on the global p- poverty budget, which is about, I think, a dollar fifty a day or something um, that people, you know, a huge percent percentage of the world population are living on that. Um, and that's the poverty line. And I was really curious if that was possible to do with my diet. And I didn't get there, but I was able for an entire week to eat a f- uh, three full meals a day for a total of around 4 to $5 a day and completely organic and vegan. That is amazing. <laughs> I'm definitely going to definitely going to link to your book because I want to find out how to do that now. Oh yeah, how God. do you do that? <laughs> it's, you know, the, I cover this in the book, obviously, and, and the book was, is just full of – I literally went through every resource I could, and there's probably some that I missed, documentaries, books – and websites mainly, and looked for every single budget tip around this topic possible and put it into this book. And this was, I did my experiment before I wrote the book. So I'm sure if I did the experiment again, I could probably eat for even less because it is amazing how accessible it is for people, definitely in the United States. I I, I have no knowledge about outside of the U.S. And I've heard from some people that, you know, specific countries like make it much more challenging to eat organic. I mean, to me, Eating non-GMO and local and and just knowing where your food's coming from, as we talked about earlier, is really the key. But I wanted to bust this myth around organic specifically yeah. and also whole foods <laughs> um, because people – to actually, this just happened to me a few weeks ago. I was at this YouTube event and someone mentioned whole foods and everybody in the room started talking about, oh, it's whole paycheck, right. you know, I can, blah, blah, blah. And I par- just spoke up and I said, by the way, I wrote a book and you can actually shop at, and, at Whole Foods and, you know, eat for under $5 a day. And everybody in the room, you know, none of them were vegan or <laughs> health conscious. They all wanted to know more about this topic. And it's because there's just this misconception that, you know, Whole Foods and these natural markets are inaccessible. And I used to have that mindset, too. When I first heard about Whole Foods, the first thing that somebody said about it was, oh, that's too expensive. We don't go there. And so for years, I didn't even walk into Whole Foods because somebody told me it was too expensive. And it's like now I shop at Whole Foods several times a week. It's not the only store I go to, but you know, it's amazing what you can do with the knowledge. And so, you know, coming back around to what you were saying about keeping, you know, raising your health and all this, I really feel like we, almost everybody can make simple decisions that either cost nothing or cost very little because a lot of the time it's about removing things from our diet, not adding it in or not just our diet, but our lifestyle. You know, like I said, with the stainless steel pots, like just don't use stainless steel. Like you probably have other utensils or other, you know, containers and things like that that you could use instead. Or you can go to a secondhand store or you can borrow it or you can get it from, you know, somebody else in your life. I mean, there's so many creative ways to do things for little or no money. And that's why I wrote the book. I mean, the book really does almost all the tips apply to things beyond diet. But I think since diet is most people's primary concern, I had to shape it around that. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone says that to me, you know, oh, well, it's too expensive. I can't afford it. And so I I definitely am going to send them your book now. And of course, Whole Foods can be whole paycheck if you don't know how to shop. (laughs) Absolutely. I mean, if you go to the... um, the hot food bar. Oh yes, <laughs> spending a lot of money there. Yeah, <laughs> it's very easy to make that tray very heavy, very fast. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it is so good. Yeah. So sometimes it's worth it. <laughs> well, that's the thing you know that I wanted to cover in the book as well as like with produce, for example. Sure, I mean I actually don't recommend that you do a hundred percent of your shopping at Whole Foods, even if you want to, because you go to another market or you go to the farmers market, you know, or you grow it yourself, like. 
there's all these little ways that you can save money if that's important to you. You know, for some people, convenience is more important. Time is more important. For some people, money is more important. So you kind of figure out what works best for you. You combine the tips together and you can make it work. Exactly. Like, I can't even remember what question I originally asked you, but you have given us such a perfect wealth of information in your last answer. (laughs) I'm just so excited to listen to this back and, and reabsorb everything you've said. Food Heals Nation, are you looking to eat a more organic, plant-based diet, but are afraid of the cost and clueless about recipes that actually taste good? Do you want to learn the secrets to eating food that tastes amazing, helps the planet, heals your body, and doesn't break the bank? Then check out the Eco Vegan Gal's new ebook, Healthy Organic Vegan on a Budget. In the book, Whitney divulges the secrets and strategies to saving money while still buying organic, nutritionally dense food as well as shares recipes on how to cook delicious plant-based meals for yourself and your family. Use the discount code FOODHEALS and get a free copy of the ebook when you buy a Food Is My Healthcare t-shirt. Check it out at veganebook.com forward slash foodheals. We love her book and we know you will too. All right. We hope you enjoyed Susie and I's recipes. We had so much fun telling you guys about them and it sparked so many ideas for future episodes. And we hope that you enjoyed all of Whitney's tips and resources. And all the show notes from today's show can be found at foodhealsnation.com forward slash 11. Yep. Episode number 11. 11. Today's tweetable comes from Whitney. Eating non-GMO and local and knowing where your food is coming from is really the key to health. If you like it, tweet it back to us at Food Heals Nation and be sure to tweet it to Whitney at Eco Vegan Gal. And use our hashtag Food Heals Podcast. Okay, see you next time, Food Heals Nation. And we want to leave you with a quote from Louise Hay, who I love, from the book, You Can Heal Your Life. If children gave up when they fell the first time, they would never learn to walk. So simple, yet so profound. That's true. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately.